In today's video, we're going to be talking about the semiconductor chip shortage and how this is starting to have a very negative impact on all of our lives. We've already covered inflation, supply chain breakdowns, staff and worker problems on previous videos. So today we're just going to focus predominantly on the semiconductor industry and the madness that is going on with this industry right now. I think you'll be quite surprised when you hear the facts around it. As technology continues to advance, this isn't like the old days where these chips were only found in cars and computers. Now they are found in pretty much everything across 170 different industries, from toasters to smart lights, from toys to toothbrushes. They are found in most products that use a power source. But a combination of negative factors has now created a shortfall in all of these industries. And now there aren't enough of them getting made, a massive global shortage. And it's getting so bad that General Motors, one of the world's largest automakers, said it could lose up to $2 billion because the semiconductor chip shortage forced it to temporarily shut down some auto manufacturing plants. So what's causing this shortage and how's it had a knock-on effect to consumers globally? Well, it's arisen from a combination of things like you can probably guess, but the biggest impact has been from workers and factories actually closing. And more staggering, the majority of these semiconductor microchips are actually made in just two factories worldwide or two companies worldwide. And as people got locked down and had to stay at home for extended periods of time, combined with extra stimulus money in the United States, a lot of people went on a spending spree, bought new appliances or upgraded their appliances, bought TVs and computers and all sorts of other things from tablets to phones. Because remember, the home wasn't just a home anymore. It was now a school, it was an entertainment place, it was a workplace. So consumers had to upgrade all of these items from computers to laptops, phones, tablets, monitors, anything people might need to work at home. And of course, webcams was the other thing with a lot of online meetings. So of course, all of this extra demand put even more pressure on an overextended industry. And last year, as the trade war between the USA and China started to ramp up, it's stated here the US government placed restrictions on the Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC. This is China's biggest chip manufacturer, which made it harder for them to sell to companies with American ties. SMIC was added to a U.S. entity list in December, restricting access to American tech and businesses. So these restrictions force companies to go in search of new suppliers. And it states here that manufacturing plants such as the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company Limited, TSMC and Samsung were two of those suppliers that a lot of companies flock to. But the problems didn't end there. You'll probably recall back in July, I did some featured pieces on the, on the channel here, some videos on the extreme weather patterns that are emerging throughout the world, not just the United States, but globally. Well, Taiwan actually suffered the biggest drought in the last 50 years. This created a huge problem because factories like this use huge volumes of water. In fact, got the statistics here, TSMC's chip manufacturing facility alone requires more than 63 million liters of water a day to keep the operation moving. That's more than 10% of the total supply from two local reservoirs. Other random events that have added to this chaos are power outages, cyber attacks, fires in some of these manufacturing facilities, supply chain issues, issues with transportation, and not forgetting the fiasco that was the Suez Canal incident, which wasn't suspicious at all. Hey, if you're getting some value from this video so far, can you do me a quick favor? Just click the like button. Why not subscribe while you're here? And always leave me a comment. I love to hear your thoughts. 
Let's look at some examples now then of semiconductor chip uses. Let's begin with vehicles or cars. Vehicles use semiconductors for managing engine performance, safety features, navigation, and entertainment systems. A modern car can have anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 chips. Just one car. Just stop and think about that for a second. 1,500 to 3,000 microchips. At the start of the pandemic, a lot of these large car manufacturers actually put on hold all of their orders of these microchips, not realizing that actually there was going to be a larger demand on vehicles. And as a result of this, many car manufacturing lines actually ground to a halt. Jaguar Land Rover was forced to pause production of vehicles at its UK and Slovakian car factories. The car company Mini temporarily shut its Oxford plant. Volkswagen has built 100,000 fewer cars so far in 2021. Ford had to park thousands of unfinished vehicles at the Kentucky Speedway, waiting on chips to finish assembling the cars. It's estimated in the USA this year that car manufacturers will produce 1 million cars less than they usually do. For UK car makers, 311,000 fewer models have come off production lines in the first half of 2021. That's almost 40% down on the 10 year average and a loss of more than 8.5 billion pounds to the UK car industry. Rental car companies are also feeling the pain at the moment. Hertz and Enterprise, for example, which usually buy brand new cars straight from the manufacturer, uh, rent them out for a while or hire them out for a while and then sell them later on, have actually resorted to buying used cars at auctions. Again, one of the reasons that we've been seeing increased prices over the last year, 50% increases on used cars in the USA, 20% in the UK. Let's move on to domestic appliances now then. Refrigerators, clothes dryers, cookers, TVs, laptops, even smart kettles and smart toasters have all been hit, resulting in long backlogs. Well, if you are having a hard time finding a new refrigerator, washer or dryer, you're not alone. Unprecedented demand and shutdowns are causing a nationwide shortage of appliances. And While most retailers are still able to get hold of these sort of appliances, what you won't notice is that they've had to replace some of the higher end brands and higher quality models with inferior and less high quality products now, often with less technology inside. Many people won't have noticed this because retailers have simply removed the higher end products and brands from their website or storefronts. And for those people who have even been going in and seeing the higher end products, you'll often be told there is a weight on that product. Gaming consoles, phones, general tech. The pandemic again led to this increase in demand on gaming. The gaming sector actually boomed during the pandemic, adding more pressure to the supply chain yet again. And Sony says that supply shortages of PlayStation 5 console will last into 2022, while Microsoft expected shortages of the Xbox Series X and Series S to last until at least late 2021. Computer giant Apple says the chip shortage is already hurting sales of iPads and Mac computers and will soon impact iPhone production as well. Even Elon Musk recently stated that the chip shortage meant Tesla would only be able to manufacture about 50% of the amount of Tesla Powerwall home batteries that it will have demand for. Imagine that you have all this demand and you can only supply 50% of it. So how does this all affect you then? What, you know, what do you need to know? Well, if you remember my lectures on supply and demand, very straightforward. Now, when you have a, a, a lack of supply of something so crucial that's in 170 different industries, it has a knock-on effect all the way up the supply chain from coming out of the factories to the next manufacturer all the way along. So what actually happens if you think of a typical product um, these days, it doesn't just have one component, it may have components from a dozen or more factories. The more complex things like iPhones, for example, these have components from all around the world, different manufacturers. 
the prices get added up as you go ar around. So not only do you have this shortage of products that you need in day-to-day -day life, you, you actually have a, a longer supply to get them to you. Again, there's a lack of supply when there's more demand like there is right now. So we've seen probably a 25, 30% increase in technology over the last year. You have this increased demand, lack of supply, therefore you have increased prices combined with inflation as well. Bear this in mind. Not only are you dealing with all of this, you're also dealing with inflation from all the new currency printing, the new stimulus. All of this goes into the, the currency pool, pushing up prices of everything across the board. So what's being done to solve this problem then? Well, TSMC is investing $100 million in additional capacity over the next three years, while Samsung and SK Hynix, along with the South Korean government, have pledged to make a $451 billion investment in capacity and incentives for chip makers. But notice what they're saying here. This is a three-year program. The US only produces around 10% of the semiconductors that they use a year. So that's 90% shortfall, which is imported from other countries. So President Biden has announced a plan to inject $52 billion into this industry to help that shortfall. Intel as well, they are pledging to put in 20 billion to producing two new factories in Arizona, USA. The European Union or the European Commission Again, exactly the same as the US, only 10% of their chips are produced in the EU. So they have also earmarked a large sum of money for new technology and research into this field. To be more precise, it wants to double the figure to 20% and it's looking to invest 24 to $36 billion to make this happen. But surprise, surprise, the UK's factory, Newport Wafer Fab, has now been taken over by the Chinese. So when will this shortfall of semiconductor chips end then? Well, the industry body says that it will end at the end of 2021. I think this is complete nonsense. Just apply again common sense and logic to everything I've explained there. If they're not going to be adding this investment for up to three years and it takes two and a half years to bring a new factory online, how is this going to end at the end of 2021? when you've already got this huge backlog and an increase on demand with the cyber attacks, the worker shortages, the breakdown in supply chains, the Suez Canal business and, and all this other nonsense going on. There's just no way. I don't believe a word of this that is gonna end in 2021. Personally, I think it's gonna be more likely 2023 to 2024 when the supply sort of um, equalizes. Again, as I always say, the solution to most of our problems right now is to bring these high-tech industries back to our home nations, be more self-reliant, give more jobs to our own workers, and this will start to equalize a lot of these pressures. It only takes some sort of um, a conflict or a disagreement with some of the, the countries in the East and the West will be completely cut off and in a very precarious position with not having these microchips. Thank you so much for watching today. Really appreciate it. Please click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment. What do you think of this whole crisis? But until next time, take care. God bless.